Uh, hi, my name is Joe Lucas, and I'm going to talk to you today about total and free float. I'm going to explain what these two terms are and what the calculations are when you do your schedule. So let's take a look at a real small piece of a major schedule. And I'm showing three tasks, lighting pictures, sprinkler heads, and ceiling panels. And again, the way this is set up is you have your early start, you have your late start, early finish, late finish. You have your duration, task number, and then the name of the task. This is a pretty standard nomenclature to use for task boxes when you do scheduling. Uh, it is not the default of Microsoft Project, but it's easy to change, so it looks just like this. All right, so let's talk about the two terms. Total float, by definition, is the amount of time you can delay a task without delaying the project completion date. And the calculation for total float, it's the late finish minus the early finish, or the late start minus the early start. Now, the point is this, total float will change as you do schedule updates, because again, as you change the durations or the actual dates on your schedule, all the calculations will be updated, and your total float values will change as your schedule changes. So be aware of that, they are not static values. Now, again, when you interpret the total float, if it's greater than zero, what it means is that you can allow that task to delay, slip, uh, and it will not impact the completion date. If the total float is five, it means you can slip the, that task five days without impacting the completion date of the job. If the float is zero, what that means is that it's critical. You really can't allow it to slip because a day of slip will delay the completion date by a day. So again, uh, no, no flexibility when the float is zero. If it's less than zero, it means you're behind schedule. It means if it's negative five, let's take an example, uh, you are five days behind the date you need to complete the project for the plan. Now the question is, how do you get negative float? Well, you can if you put a constraint on your completion date of the project. If you make the date on your project, for example, September 1st, and you say finish no later than, what can happen is you can end up with negative float in your schedule because it's forcing the schedule to comply with that constraint you put on it. So again, avoid constraints. Total flow ownership, again, be aware of this. It's not owned by the task. It's like playing in a sandbox with your friends. You have to share. So again, it's owned by all tasks in that path. You have to share the float. If the first task in the path uses up the float, the rest of the tasks don't have any float. It goes away. Now, to contrast that, when you talk about free float, free float is owned by the individual task. It doesn't get shared. Free float is the amount of time you can delay a task without delaying any successor task in the schedule. That's the definition. The calculation is real simple. For free float, you take the early start of the next task minus the early finish of the current task minus one. And when you do that, they'll give you the free float value for that task. And again, I want to stress it's owned by the task, and again, it will not impact anybody else in the schedule. You can give a day of float, free float, you can take that extra day without impacting anybody. Now, I want to go back to the example, and again, there's more to the schedule. We're not showing the whole schedule here, but again, if you look for total float, it's zero here, 30 minus 30, or you could have taken 21 minus 21. The total float is zero. Over here, it's also zero and also zero here. If you look down here, this one's sprinkler heads, it's 20 minus 15, I have five days of total float. What that means is this path, and there's another task in front of it, we can delay up to five days without delaying the completion date. Now, free float, look at this. Uh, again, the way to calculate it, take 21, that's the early start of the successor, minus 15, that's the early start of the, of the task. That's going to be 6, minus 1 is 5. You have 5 days of 
free float for sprinkler heads. If you look up here, it's 21 minus 20, which is 1, minus 1 is 0. There is no free float. So again, what does this tell you? Well, this right here has the least amount of flow in your schedule. Therefore, it's the critical path. Down here, we have total float. So this path has extra time, and we can delay this path up to five days without impacting the completion date of the project. In addition, this one task here has five days of free float. Usually, in a schedule, you have two or more tasks going into one, that's the place to find free float. It may not happen, but it's a good place to be looking for free float. All right, this little bit of information around total float, free float was brought to you by PM Centers USA. We are a training consulting company. We do project management, we do business analysis. It was also brought to you by Consult USA, that's our sister company that does IT staffing. I hope this helps you better understand the concept of total float and free float, and good luck with your project.